Hi everybody, my name is Josh and I'm going to be talking to you this evening about tree stands and tree stand safety. So a hypothetical question for you. How many of you use or know someone who uses a tree stand? And how many of you know someone who has been injured while using a tree stand? Statistics show that three out of four of us who use tree stands will be involved in a tree stand related accident. How do we stay safe? We must remember the steps to tree stand safety. Steps stands for S, safety harness or a fall arrest system. T, tree stand maintenance. E, evaluate your stand site. P, partners and plans and S, signals. So let's break this down a little bit. The S, safety. Safety is paramount when using a tree stand. Whenever you're hunting from an elevated position, you want to be sure to use your fall arrest system that is manufactured to the industry standards. That fall arrest system should be a full body harness. Gone are the days where you're using a single strap belt or a chest harness. They can be deadly. You want to make sure you're using your full body harness, which during a fall actually helps to ensure that your head remains above your hips and you remain inside of your harness. You're not going to slip out of it. Staying in your harness gives you the best chance for self-rescue or to safely wait out the arrival of help. The most important aspect of your fall arrest system is to actually wear it. Be sure to wear it from the time you leave the ground to the time you return back to the ground. The highest risk of a fall comes from when you're ascending or descending to your stand not while you're perched on the platform. I've actually heard many people say, oh, it takes too long or it's just too difficult to adjust the safety strap while you're climbing. And they think that they can clip in when they reach hunting height and still stay safe. However, there are many factors that can cause a fall from the moment you leave the ground. Things like equipment failures from worn or broken parts, environmental conditions like rain or ice, your personal health, you could be tired or not paying attention to what you're doing, and uh, even the type of bark on a tree could actually cause you to fall. The T stands for tree stand maintenance. It's important to inspect all of your equipment before you use it and a full inspection before each season starts. You want to check for missing or broken parts. You want to be sure to replace rusted cables or bolts and essentially you want to follow the manufacturer's guidelines for maintaining their tree stands. Fun fact, According to the Tree Stand Manufacturers Association, the service life of your safety harness is only five years. That's it. You always want to replace your harness after those five years are expired. Uh, you also want to replace your harness if it's ever been involved in a fall. Let's face it, it's an inexpensive piece of equipment to save your life. E, evaluate your stand site. Tree selection is very important. You want to make sure you're climbing a healthy living tree that can support your weight. Look in and around your tree, watching for overhanging dead branches that could fall and cause injury. So you know moss grows on the north side of a tree, the shady side, but fungus, mushrooms, things like that usually grow on dead or dying trees. You really want to avoid these types of trees. Also, look for leaves growing on your tree that you're selecting if you're scouting early in the season. No leaves on the tree when it foliage should be there, maybe better skip that tree. So after you've picked your tree, you'll need to look for a tree with cover. You want to look for foliage from neighboring trees, limbs radiating out of your tree, or even trees with multiple trunks. This cover gives you the extra protection if you have to move around into proper shooting position. Uh, the cover helps break up your outline and, and uh, really helps disguise you then from the eyes of the animals you're going after. Depending on your stand type, tree size is also an important factor. Just because a tree could support your weight, you may want to search for one with a larger trunk. And in my opinion, this helps it from not swaying so much in the wind. I don't like to be moving around in a tree stand when I'm 20 feet off the ground. Some trees can actually be too large. The straps of your tree stand might not fit around them securely or safely. So you need to know the limitations of your particular equipment. And really you should practice using them before you're putting them out into the field. P for partners and plans. Hunt with a partner and have a plan in case of an emergency. If you're doing a solo hunt, let someone else know where you're gonna be and when you plan on returning. 
If you don't return at that time, they'll at least know where to start looking for you. And in the absolute best case scenario, they may come looking for you and find you struggling to drag out your, your harvest. S, signals. Signals are important to carry with you to alert others in case you need help. Carry a whistle or another signaling, signaling device. This could also include cell phones and walkie talkies, flares, mirrors, or even blaze orange garments. I've used an orange hat to signal to other people that I was camouflaged and in a position. So anytime you leave the ground, you're putting yourself at risk for an accident. So why even use a tree stand in the first place? Hunting from an elevated position, typically 12 to 20 feet, gives you a better field of view. You can see over top of the ground cover and observe game approaching from a much farther distance, giving you more time to prepare for a shot. Sometimes you can gain that advantage by climbing as little as five feet off the ground, depending on your situation. Hunting from above gets you away from the animal's natural defenses of sight and smell. By hunting from above, you're often out of the animal's normal field of vision. If you're sitting still, they're not gonna see you. Also, it makes you more visible to other hunters by making it easier for them to see you. They are going to be looking up and notice something sticking out from, uh, from around a tree. When you're hunting from a higher position, your scent will drift farther away from your tree location with the slightest breeze. Use this to your advantage, especially when archery hunting, where your ethical shot range is often under 30 yards. Be sure to note that wind direction when you're selecting your tree and position yourself on the downwind side of where you think the animals will be coming from. Hunting from a stand gives you a better shot angle. You get a high entrance wound and a low exit wound. That low exit wound actually puts more blood on the ground faster, which will help you find your blood trail and help with a successful recovery. When archery hunting, it helps in recovering your arrow faster, which gives you more clues about your shot placement and how aggressive you should be when tracking the animal. When using a rifle, it also helps to ensure a safer backstop where bullets that might go through a target are actually directed towards the ground instead of out at eye level or upward angles. So we're going to talk about three types of tree stands. Uh, we're going to talk about the ladder stand, a hang-on stand, and a climbing stand. Let's start with the ladder stand. Out of all of these stands, a ladder stand is probably the easiest to use after they're set up. Everyone here can climb a ladder, so you would be able to climb into a ladder stand. Even if you're afraid of heights, you feel more secure using a ladder stand. Ladder stands often have a larger platform, which can oftentimes comfortably accommodate two people. That's great for beginner hunters because you can sit close to your, your mentor. Even though it's easy to climb, you still need to be secured to your safety line. When you're climbing, make sure you use three points of contact. That's two hands and one foot, or two feet and one hand. Don't rush when you're getting into your ladder stand. Uh, you don't want to risk falling, slipping. They are the fastest to get to hunting height already, so take your time. Ladder stands do have some disadvantages in my opinion. I think they should be pre-hung because they're really heavy to carry in, they're loud and cumbersome to set up, and they require two or even three people to raise safely and secure to the tree. All of that puts ground scent down, leaving the animals that use their nose in defense to smell that, that you were in there doing something. Also, when you're setting up a ladder stand, you want to make sure that the, the legs of the ladder are on a stable level base to give it the most stability when you're setting it up, which might actually limit your options and locations to set your tree stand. And the first thing you'll notice Grant does is clip his harness into the safety line. This safety line uses a prussic knot to slide up the rope so Grant's always attached while he's off the ground. You'll see he uses three points of contact, two hands and a foot or two feet and a hand as he reaches out to that prussic knot to slide it up as he goes up. You'll see the platform is also quite roomy. He's got room to possibly fit two people up here. As he reaches to the top, He'll make sure that prussic knot is positioned over his head, keeping his safety line nice and tight. 
Hang-on stands are next. They are much smaller and lighter, and they can be set as a pre-hung stand or used in a mobile setup, carried in the day of a hunt. This stand consists of a platform with a seat that is strapped to the tree at hunting height, and it uses a wide variety of climbing options that could include segmented ladders, compact climbing sticks, strap-on or screw-in style steps, all of which give you more options to the types of trees that you can get into. Even if they have low-hanging branches like conifer trees or trees that uh, twist or bend a little, uh, when you're using a hang-on stand, you want to make sure your safety harness will accept a lineman's belt to keep you attached the whole time around the tree while you're setting your steps and your stand. Here's a good time to note that when hunting on public land, you cannot damage any trees. So using tree stands and equipment that securely attach without breaking through the bark layer is a must. You cannot use screw-in style steps or gear hangers, and you're not allowed to trim shooting lanes or clear limbs from around your stand site. I get around this by using a variety of twisty gear ties and small lengths of cordage to move and secure obstacles, limbs, things like that out of my shooting lanes. When you're setting up your climbing method, be sure to have your last step higher than your platform. You never want to have to scramble up onto your stand. Be sure that you're stepping down onto the center of your platform. If using as a pre-hung stand, make sure you're using your safety line secured at the top and the bottom so you're always attached while climbing. The hang-on tree stand, you'll notice this stand is pre-installed and the first thing he does is clip into his safety line. Slides that prusik knot up the safety line, always being attached. Again, three points of contact as he climbs to the top. You can see the straps of his ladder sticks on public land, you're not allowed to damage a tree, so no screw-in steps. Although this is private land and he does have a bow hanger that is screwed in at the top. You'll notice the steps go above the platform and he's able to step down onto the center of the platform. Next up is the climbing tree stand. This is a very mobile and compact system, oftentimes they have backpack straps that you can carry in the day of your hunt. You can set them up quickly and quietly. They consist of two pieces, a platform and a climbing aid which doubles as your seat. You attach them to the tree along with your safety strap, then you walk inchworm style up the tree. First you move the seat with your hands, then you move the platform with your feet and readjust your safety line and repeat that until you're up to hunting height. I like to use this setup for an observation hunt, especially in new areas. Uh, because it's so quick and quiet to set up, I can start on the outside of a hunting area to observe where I'm seeing the animal activity. I can climb down quickly, make a move closer to where I'm seeing that activity. Climbing tree stands are also useful on public land where you may not want to leave a stand sit for security reasons. They don't want to grow legs and get up and walk away. or just even informing other hunters that this spot that you scouted out might be a good spot for them to sit. The system uses friction and angles to cam lock itself securely to the tree. Be sure to secure your platform to the seat with a tether to make sure you don't lose the platform if you should uh, have a slip and a fall. Some tethers can be used to cinch down while you're hunting, so when you transition from sitting on the seat to standing on the platform, it pulls that tether tight, forcing the seat to lock into place. When setting up at the bottom of a tree, you want to be sure to account for the taper of the tree, wide at the bottom and skinnier as you move up. So you wanna set the front of your stand at an upward angle. The goal is to end up with the platform being level for safety and comfort at hunting height. Consistently finding what this angle needs to be at the base comes with time and practice, I can take a bit of trial and error, even with practice. Ask me how I know. Tree selection with a climber is very important. You want a straight tree with no branches interfering with your climb. You should avoid trees with shaggy and brittle bark. Tree diameter is a limiting factor with this stand. You'll be limited to trees approximately 12 to 20 inches, depending on your particular stand. The act of climbing can actually be a disadvantage as well. You need to be in decent shape to work yourself up the tree, and that can be a difficult procedure to master. 
Next up is the climbing tree stand. You'll see the platform at the bottom and the seat or climbing aid at the top. We're setting that platform at an angle to account for the taper of the tree where it's wider at the bottom and narrower as you climb up. You'll see the first thing Grant does when he leaves the ground is connect his safety harness to his tree rope. And here he is adjusting that tree rope up higher. He's setting the seat and then using his feet to raise the platform. Sets it again and then adjusts the seat higher. Once the seat is set and he's approached the safety line, he's going to reach up, adjust the safety line, and repeat this process until he's at his hunting height. Here's one thing you want to watch out for. Um, because a climbing tree stand uses friction, when you push down it locks to the tree. Um, Grant wasn't pushing down there and you saw the seat slip. That's actually why we connect the seat to the platform. If your platform were to slip, uh, you're always connected. It's not going to fall all the way to the base of the tree. Once he has everything set, you see his safety line and prusik knot higher above his head. Good thing to do when you reach the top is to do a practice draw or test yourself to make sure you have clear shooting lanes and you're able to get a shot where you think the deer are going to be coming from. We do this with all styles of stands making sure you have unobstructed views to your target area. Here's an observation uh, with this clip where you can see the platform is at a downward angle so he didn't account at the base for that taper enough. Although it might be stable, it's less than comfortable if he were to need to stand. In this clip we can see Grant inspecting his gear for the next time he uses this stand. When you're setting your stand, you also want to be downwind. Here Grant's using milkweed to test the wind direction. You can see the milkweed float away, away from the food plot that he's hoping the deer will come into. With any type of elevated stand, you want to make sure that you're using a haul rope to pull your unloaded weapon and any other gear up. Never climb while holding your weapon or having packs strapped to you. They can add weight, they can pull you off balance, and you risk falling. Tree stands take a lot of effort to set up. They can be costly and cumbersome or downright dangerous if you don't use them properly. Understanding how your tree stand works, what its limits are, and with safety in mind, you can safely use a tree stand to take full advantage of hunting off the ground.